And, and for those who don't know, my name is Brittany Boston. I'm the CEO and founder of I Am Musicology, a not-for-profit organization for brown and black people who are looking to be in the entertainment industry. And today, the theme of this event is um, a night of R&B. All right, we're about to start the panel. This is um, going to be a panel. So just really quick. We're gonna have a panel discussion. All of these people are very informative and influential people in the entertainment industry, specifically music. And then we're gonna transition into an artist showcase, which I know you guys are all excited to see. And so, yeah, we're gonna get into it. So, all right. So I wanna introduce our first panelist. Um, this person is a longtime friend of mine. He's also a music manager, happens to work for the Recording Academy. Everybody, please give it up for Lynn Brown. My <laughs> All right, give it up for Lynn. Next up is my Libra sister. She is a boss chick. She, can we turn the music down a little bit? Feel like I'm in competition. She's the CEO and founder of a nonprofit that advocates for teens and young adults pursuing careers in live entertainment. Please give it up for Candace Newman. She's the CEO and founder of Live Out Live. All right, keep that clap going. Keep that clap going. Keep that clap going. And last but certainly not least. She's the director of Rhythm and Soul at ASCAP. I'm sorry, she's the director of creative for Rhythm and Soul at ASCAP. Please give it up for Jay Marie Jones. Yes, yes, yes. I'm feeling blessed. I feel like I can rock on this beat. Okay, all right. <laughs> Let me start it. All right, let's get right into it. Um, you know, the intention and, and for those who don't know, my name is Brittany Boston. I'm the CEO and founder of I Am Musicology, a not-for-profit organization for brown and black people who are looking to be in the entertainment industry. And today, the theme of this event is um, a night of R&B. So today I wanted to just bring together a collective of individuals who are instrumental into the careers of artists. Let us know who you are and how'd you get in your position and all that good jazz. All right, I'll, I'll take a start at this. So, <clears throat> so I'm Len Brown. I oversee all of the, the hip hop, R&B, and reggae awards at the Academy. Been doing that for the last about four years now. And I mean, to be honest, it's probably by the grace of God that I got this job just because straight up, like I'm not even playing with y'all because otherwise, a lot of these jobs, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to be here today because as a black man, I didn't know there was an opportunity like this at the Academy, right? Or, or anywhere in the music business. So. But a recruiter hit me up, and you know it's it's worked out ever since. So, yeah, I, I'm happy to be here. Obviously, I was doing music journalism first, doing working for Entertainment Tonight. But you know, I'm actually in a position where I can actually help us a lot more in the position I'm in. So, uh, I'm always forever grateful. And before we move on from you, Lynn, because I don't think a lot of people know the Recording Academy. They know the Grammys. Can you elaborate a little bit more about what you do and how it impacts you know, a lot of artists in the room today? I mean, for me, first and foremost, is just letting people know how it works. Because I feel like a lot of artists just frankly don't even know how to get nominated, how to get involved, how to even get their music submitted. And so that's what I try and do to every artist, label, publisher, people I run into, is just try to educate them as much as I can with just the basics. You know what I'm saying? And, as well as trying to find ways to get them more involved with whatever they're doing, so that way there's a more of a mutual beneficial relationship instead of it's a one-sided type of thing. So for me, it's always just about how do I educate everybody around me and how do I help them out with whatever they're trying to you know, accomplish with their goals. My Libra sister, Miss Candace Newman, how did you get here? I know a lot of, some may know um, about your journey at Live Nation, but some may not be aware. And uh, yeah, go ahead and elaborate on how you got to where you are. Yeah, um, well, I'm Candace Newman. Um, like Brittany said, I'm the CEO and founder of Live Out Live. And um, 
Uh, Live Out Live is inspired by me and my career and, and my journey in the live music industry as a black woman. I worked at Live Nation for a decade plus, 11 years, and up into the pandemic. And um, I was the only black woman there producing concerts at a high level, a global level. And so I, I felt inspired to um, do more and create more access for us. Um, it, it's, it was a long time there, and it just didn't make sense to not see enough of us or any more of us in that space. And so um, independently, I'm able to um, create more access. Um, I'm a live, um, Live Out Live is a live music agency and booking um, touring agency. And so through that, I'm able to not only um, provide opportunities for up and coming emerging talent and giving them a stage to go out on tour, um, experience a live music, um, experience their live music endeavors on an independent level, but also I'm able to increase diversity in live music by providing access and um, education and opportunity through my platform. Um, I produce a live concert called Unrestricted Live. So behind the scenes, I'm allowing um, up and coming students and diverse black and brown live music hopefuls um, an opportunity to um, be at a concert, help execute a concert, advance a concert, um, understand the inner workings of a concert, and eventually a tour, so that they will be armed and equipped with the tools that they need to um, help support my organization, but go on to support organizations like Live Nation, AEG Live, and other uh, major live music um, companies and organizations. Yes. And, yeah, keep clapping for Candice, because... Honestly, you know, a lot of you guys, you know, everybody wants to go on tour, everybody wants to, you know, perform as an artist, and, you know, you're looking at somebody who literally is helping put people in position. If you're familiar with Kenyon Dixon, he's out on tour right now, she put that together, so make sure you guys plug and play with Candice um, today. Yeah, for sure. Jay Marie. Hey, y'all. So, um, yes, my name is Jay Marie Jones. It's Jay or Jay Marie, not just Marie. Um, <laughs> Y'all would, the, the, listen, so many people say, oh, hey, Marie. No. Oh, <laughs> so, anyway, I'm the director of creative for Rhythm and Soul Gospel at ASCAP. And um, if you don't know, ASCAP is a performing rights organization, or PRO is what we like to call us. And we help you get paid from your public performances. So that being streaming, radio, television, uh, any kind of concert venue or gym or restaurant, any of that stuff, we help you get your money, um, both from the writer side and the publishing side. Um, in my particular position, I help cultivate and maintain relationships between our songwriters and our publishers. And one of my main things being on the creative side is just to really um, help creatively. How can I assist you in your career? So that might be putting together a writing camp. That might be doing a session, um, putting together an educational panel. Anything that I can help creative-wise to advance your career, that's kind of what I do. Okay. And by show of hands, who is a member of ASCAP in the room? All right. <laughs> so, Jay Marie is somebody you definitely want to know. <laughs> and by a show of hands, who's a, a, a member of the Recording Academy? Anybody? All right, we got one. Strong one. <laughs> That's better than none. Um, <laughs> all right. By a show of hands, how many artists do we have in the room? How many people in the room are artists? I just want to get a gauge of the room. Okay. Five and a half. Okay. Uh, <laughs> songwriters, producers, y'all need to be networking with each other. Those are the people you need to talk to. Um, all right, so just want to continue on that tone about, you know, we've been harping on indie artists. So you guys all talked about what you, you do in your role and your position. So how can you advocate for the independent artists in your position? Like, what are some tools and some resources that you have in your position to help them pursue their dreams? Well, for me, I mean, the first thing I always want to do with any indie artist, especially the, the black and brown ones, is to just have them sign up, be a member, because you're better off being a member than not. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't really fight any type of fight outside of the building. You 
kind of kind of find your way inside of it to make sure you make some impact, not and just for yourself. How do you become a member? Because I'm not a member. It, yo, it's easy for an artist. All you need is what six to twelve credits on any streaming platform, and then two recommendations from anybody that work in music. So it doesn't have to. It could be a a coordinator, it could be a VP, it doesn't matter, anybody. And same with professionals like you. Anybody who works in music, just you just need two people to vouch for you and you and that's it. And obviously a hundred dollar a year fee, but that's yeah. And then what's the perks and the benefits of becoming a member? I mean one of the best perks is that you can actually submit music to be considered for a Grammy as a member. So that's something that I feel like a lot of people don't realize that, that power is in their hands, not just the label. You can do that yourself. You can network with other fellow music music folks, not just you know the ones that you may know from around your hood or whatever, but anybody else from around the country. There's a whole network of folks that you can also tap in with, as well as being able to just work with us to find new ways. To, how do we improve this academy? Like, how do we make better steps, better steps forward than just the things that we've been doing currently so far? Because I think we can always improve. We can always make strides forward to progress and to really include everybody that we want to include and that starts with you being able to come us and come and give us ideas from the inside love it and what about you candace um well let me because i feel like we're going in a circle i'm gonna go skip over candace and come back make a u-turn um come back to jay marie and just talk about um ascap you know what are some tools and resources you can provide for independent artists so I think one of the great things about ASCAP is that we work with all levels of creators. So whether you're just starting out, emerging, platinum selling, we work with them all. Um, and one of the things we really do is, is education. So we hold a lot of educational panels. There's tons of information you can find on our website. There's people like me who are resources. Um, and it's just about knowing what you need to do, right? So yes, you need to become a member. A lot of people don't know that you should become a member as a writer and a publisher, right? Because you have your writing side and you have your publishing side. So if you're just joining as a writer, you're missing out money, you know, out on money on that publishing side. A lot of people don't know that. The other thing is you need to make sure that you're registering your music. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with who have, Records on the charts, <laughs> you know, who've had syncs and movies, who's had all kind of things, and their song is not registered. So how can we pay you out? We can't. So just educating yourself on what you need to be doing, making sure you're utilizing people like me as resources. Um, yeah, that's one of the main ways we uh, educate and help. Okay, and I just want to clarify something because I've been told many times, like, I ask somebody, an artist, like, who's your publisher? And they say, ASCAP or BMI. <laughs> so just for clarification, um, ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC are not your publishers. They are performing rights organizations. And from my understanding, you guys only pay out on the writer share, correct? No. You, Writing the and publishing. publishing. Yes. Okay. But you still need a publisher to collect... So yes, you need a publishing entity. So even if you're signed to a publisher, Peer Music or Sony ATV or anything like that, you should still have your own, okay? And you register that with ASCAP or who, whatever PRO you're signed with, your publishing entity needs to be registered with that same, in, that same PRO. Um, and then if you're, you sign a major deal with a, um, another publisher, such as a Sony ATV or Peer, then you just assign your royalties to them but you should have your own publishing entities to make sure you're collecting your publishing share. And that's especially if you're an indie artist, because if you're an indie artist and you're not signed to any other publisher, you're missing totally out on that money. All right, I hope y'all taking notes, mental notes. And uh, Candice, Live Our Live. How can you guys advocate for indie artists? Yes, um, if you wanna go out on tour, if you are in the position to Perform live if you want bookings and support in maximizing that opportunity. I'm here and available to help support that. Um, not only providing the logistical aspects of it, but just educating you and helping you understand um, how to maximize the live music um, industry overall as a touring artist or as a live performing artist, whether that's festivals and and or um, one-off shows and or um, you're prepared to go out on a tour that's gonna support your album, 
Um, I'm here to support that. I'm here to help educate you in general on that process and the steps to do that so that when you level up, when you do that independently and you really score and you knock it out the park, you'll be able to level up and you'll be able to tell larger promoters and bookers your price. You can tell them how much you're worth opposed to them telling you. All right, all right, all right. Um, now, are there any resources or advice you guys could give to anybody that's looking to make money in this industry um, as an independent artist? Hey, so, so I've come from the artist world. I'm an artist, I'm a singer songwriter. Um, I've done the, the struggling, I've, I've slept on couches, I've slept in my car, I've done all kinds of stuff, y'all. Um, and I've lived like nine or 10 lives. I've had a thousand different jobs. I, you know, I've lived that life, okay? I, I know the struggle well. So I wanted to be in a position like this because I know it. And I, I wanted to be able to advocate for, stand up for, and just spread my knowledge and, and be someone who like knows the game, knows the struggle, and can help change things, right? So I would say one of the main things is kind of what, ask yourself what does success look like to you? Right, because a lot of times we measure success on what other people want for us or what they view for us. Listen, when I was little, I was gonna be Beyonce. I was gonna be the next Beyonce. I was gonna be the superstar, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of it came from my parents are musicians. They toured, they did all this stuff. So I was comparing my success to them. That's not what it looked for, like for me. I was able to accomplish a lot uh, that I wanted to accomplish in music, um, which is why I could transition to the exec side now. But I still had to get really um, honed in on what is success to me. Okay, I'm not Beyonce. I'm not a you know a number one hit solo, but I was a part of some a number one record. I was a part of a Grammy winning record. I was a part of this, so that's success for me. You know, hey, what's I can record? move on. Share the tea. So I was part. Of, I was a part of a Sunday service with Ye and um, part of his hey. his Donda okay. album and Woo! everything like that. So okay, yeah. Superstar. So, <laughs> So that's the last thing I did and before I transitioned, which, you know, COVID was like, girl, what you doing? All right, time to make some moves. So, yeah. And do you still write? I do. What, if you're an artist, you will always be an artist, you know, and that's why I had Facts. to be in a creative role, though. This role allows me to still be creative. I'm coming up with panels. I'm coming up with writing camps and workshops and, you know, and because I'm still a creative or, you know, live that life, I kind of know or have a good sense of what creators are looking for, so. That's amazing. All right, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Y'all don't have to be shy, like y'all, you know, Lynn, you could jump no, in. I'm not that shy, but you, I mean, you, as, far as, I, as far as the indie artists, I mean, I, I think from number one, I, I feel like is never sit on music too long. Because so I think a lot of artists I know, they can, they'll record for years and just probably put out one EP, which makes no sense to me, because how else are you going to build a fan base if you don't feed them, if you don't give them more music and not be too... And I understand our artists can be a little in their head about it, you know, because that's their babies and some things that they don't want to really share with the world, but you kind of have to, especially when it comes to this. And I mean, every indie artist wants to make money, at least as far as I know. And you always want to look at other ways to make that money, not just through streaming, but, you know, working out and finding out relationships with music supervisors or figuring out how else we can, you know, take a show on the road so that way you can actually see some more of this money yourself or find opportunities with different brands that can help leverage your star power so that way they can get something from you, you get something from them, and it all works out. So, I mean, there's a million avenues these days to make money as an indie, as an indie artist, excuse me, without having to worry about how my streaming numbers are. And, you know, I, I feel like as big as your network is, there's always going to be an opportunity to be able to find out what that looks like for you. Oh, that's definitely facts because I saw, um, I don't know if TK's here, but, you know, just different people in the NFT space that sells their music through, you know, they, yep. make, they make a living off of that. So you really just have to be creative. It, and honestly, it's beyond just being an artist. You can't just make good music. You have to be more than that. I'm sorry, guys, if you wanted yeah, to just sign up to be yeah. an artist and put your, your music brand. out. It comes with a lot more. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I was talking to Jay Marie earlier, and um, I was telling her how I appreciate that she's an artist with business acumen and able to balance that. And I always encourage that from artists to understand the business side of things, at least 
you know, a basic level, on a basic level. So being in this type of space, um, tapping to the resources that I know Brittany um, provide, and I know that um, organizations like Live Out Live, my organization provide in the live music space, we provide a full infrastructure in helping you understand um, all of the inner workings of the live music industry, the ecosystem of the live music industry, the players of the live music industry, and what cer certain terminology means so that you can really understand how to go out there and talk that talk and walk that walk and really maximize on all your opportunities. So being in this space alone is a good resource for you and in tapping to, into and connecting with the people that are here to network with. And I just want to add, like, it's great to have a team. We all need teams. We can't do it all by ourselves. But right. you need to know as much as you can. When you're in the room with your manager or your attorney, attorney, you need to know what they're talking about. When you're getting your royalty statements or you got an advance and they're giving you your statements about recruitment, you need to know <laughs> that, you know, when you get an advance, you owe this money back. It's, no money is free, okay? So you just you need to know the lingo. You need to really educate yourself as much as possible on the lingo. 100%. Clap it up for this wonderful advice and knowledge that you guys have been provided with today. All right, before we, um, before we depart from the panel, um, where can people follow you? Where can they keep up with what you have going on? Well, for me, you can always find me on Instagram. It's can I kick it too? or just len.brown at grammy.com if you have any questions about that stuff, because for me, I'm just trying to help everybody out with this, and I, there's no question that's too stupid. There's nothing that I can't answer when it comes to this organization, because I feel like the more of us that understand, the better off we are. You can um, find my organization at liveoutlive underscore LA on all social platforms, and um, you can find me personally at PYT Candice. And, um, and or Candice at liveoutlive.com if you have any specific questions and want to tap in. And for me, I am rarely on Instagram. I post more of my stories, but if you want to check me out, it's Experience J Marie. That's just J M A R I E. And um, email is jmjones at ascap.com. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. And you guys should all be following I Am Musicology at I Am Musicology on Instagram. And make Better sure you it. subscribe to our mailing list so you can stay tuned of all events. We have a lot of stuff coming up. Um, and I haven't shared this yet, um, but I don't know. The spirit is leading me to just share it. We, we have a space, um, a creative space that's going to be opening for all of you guys um, who you know, in this industry with the recording studio, podcasts, um, and just a creative space. Is it so free? Got, Where? Yeah, it's going to be free. Yeah, that's Where? Cold. It's Where a little far now, but you know, you Where? make the commute, it's worth it in Woodland Hills. But you know, we're going to be doing workshops and just different things because I want to keep this going and I feel like it's important. And honestly, I just feel like it's my calling. So yeah, you guys stay tuned. So follow. All right. Give it up for our panelists. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate you.